first lesson is found in the book of Exodus, chapter 34, beginning with verse 5. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generation. The word of the Lord. The psalm reading this morning is found in Psalm 84, beginning with verse 1. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, they are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains often also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. <clears throat> gospel reading is found in the book of John, chapter 1, beginning with verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. All right, be seated, please. Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you first for the presence of Jesus Christ among us and the power of your Holy Spirit that moves through us, that you are the one that can open us. I pray for this time to just be a time of, of shalom, of, of peace and wholeness without distraction so that we can experience your graciousness. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, so I, before I start, I, do, I, I have to say Again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone who helped with the fall festival yesterday. Um, it was beyond my expectations considering the weather especially, but God did so many good things there yesterday. And there was a, 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 just a heap of graciousness that happened because you guys are gracious. And I have to say this right off the bat, that, you know, this is a gracious church, okay? I mean, if, if you were, if I was to pinpoint uh, good, one of Good Shepherd's 
greatest God qualities, it is that Good Shepherd is gracious. Gracious. And I'll explain what all that means in a second. But, you know, amen and praise Jesus that what a, what a, what a great place to be. I mean, and y'all take care of not just each other, but, I mean, so many people with Alpha and with funerals and with, with neighbors and with friends and just if somebody sees something, they do. Anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so now I'm done schmoozing, um, but you're awesome, all right? And so today we're talking about a quantum leap with God, and so that quantum leap is, and I'm, you can tell I'm already excited, whoo! When you're excited by the light, right, and you, you are excited by the light of Christ, and the Holy Spirit begins to transform you, and you leap, an advancing leap with God into his character, and you're displaying his character into the world, that is a quantum leap with God. Uh, it has nothing to do with the TV show. Um, today's sermon is called Unstoppable Grace because that's the kind of graciousness God has. And I'll talk about that in a bit. We start with the scripture from Exodus. really want to hone in on God explaining himself to Moses. He says, this is who I am. And he says, I am, I am. So he says, Yahweh, Yahweh. Actually, in the Hebrew is Yahweh, Yahweh, El Rahum We Hanun. All right? But we did compassion last week, so I'm not going to re redo that. But this week we're focusing on Yahweh, Yahweh, El Hanun. And he says, I am, I am the gracious God. I am, I am the gracious God. And graciousness is awesome. And I have to say, like with compassion, that is not natural for me. That's a, it's a Holy Spirit thing that it ever happens. And I've kind of told you stories. I don't have time for those stories. But for me, it's, compassion is not natural. But I've always been drawn toward graciousness. And graciousness is showing kindness and favor and mercy, forgiveness and beauty to people who, whether they deserve it or not, whether they deserve it or not, and especially when they're at your mercy. All right? And so you, there's a power structure with mercy. Somebody with more power shows kindness to somebody with less power, and that's mercy. And the reason I always remember that is because I have a big brother, and I don't know if you guys ever played the game, do you ever play mercy? Ironically, there's no mercy involved in it at all. And my brother, when I say I have a big brother, he's much, much bigger than me. You know, six, seven, and people always said, uh, you shouldn't pick on your little brother, he'll be bigger than you someday, and he just said, I'll risk it. And it, the bet paid off. So, but he always wanted to play mercy. And you lock your hands together and squeeze as tight as you can. And whoever can't handle the pain anymore says, mercy, mercy, mercy. Right? And then you're the game. Who, the, no mercy at all. But uh, he loved that game. I don't know. But, that, but the more powerful shows kindness to the less powerful. That's mercy. And you see graciousness and mercy going together, graciousness and joy going together. When you have power over someone, you show loving kindness to them, that's graciousness. When someone forgives a huge debt, we say, wow, that was gracious of them, right? When you go and you, you, you stay at somebody's house or you go to dinner at somebody's house and they treat you like a king and they take care of you and it's, it's, it blows your mind how, how hospitable they are to you, we said, wow, they were gracious hosts, right? And that's graciousness in action. Throughout the Bible, we see the God of the universe always, and I mean always, finding ways to reconcile with people who are stiff-necked, rebellious, sinful, 
right? But he never stops. He never stops trying to reconcile and be in relationship with people, and it never ends, and that's his kind of graciousness. And because it's unstoppable, unstoppable, that's him, okay? Now, throughout Scripture, the root of the word gracious, what do you think the root of the word gracious is? Grace. Grace. So there's no graciousness without grace, and the word grace in Hebrew, ironically, it, so grace denotes beauty and favor. But when you say the word in Hebrew, it sounds like a cat trying to cough up a hairball. So it's not a very beautiful word, but it denotes beauty and favor. It is hen. Okay? So hen denotes beauty and favor as an action of grace. In Greek, it's a little bit prettier. It's uh, charitas is the word gracious. Uh, the word grace is charis. Uh, and it's kind of cool because if you go back a few layers to the root of grace, Horace, you can almost see the word grace in Horace, right? If you put a G where the CH is, you, just, it's, you can see it's where we get grace from, right? So Horace, but you go back a few layers and it's hara, the root of that is hara, it's joy. And so there's a connection between, if you're shown, if you're shown grace and, and somebody is gracious to you, What's your feeling? Joy, right? So there's a connection there between grace and joy, and we get the word charisma from grace, right? Char charisma. And so if somebody has charisma, they make you feel like you're, you're on top of the world because you're with this person who has all this charisma, right? Because they're filled with grace, okay? So I just want you to kind of get ahead a for what, what grace is. And there's a type of beauty. If you really break... Ten down. There's beauty and favor. So there's a type of beauty in the word grace. Ten, as beauty is used throughout Scripture when you see something beautiful, right? So when, it, when they talk about the deer leaping, right? I always think of Lynn Swan with that for some reason, but remember, am I just, is that my age now? Lynn Swan? He was a, he was a football player who took ballet and he had, the, he was great, he was so beautiful, his leaps, he was like a gazelle jumping, you know? But when you see that beauty of a deer jump, that's, that's hen. That's hen. When, you, when the king speaks favor to the people, his lips are dripping with hen. Right? Dripping with grace. I love that kind of, the beauty of that explanation. And, and hen is something that is, is, is perceived. It's the eyes of the observer. So, for me, I picked a psalm this week that has always been one of my favorite psalms because when I hear this psalm, and, and I love that Dana was reading because I, 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 just the beauty of his voice, speaking of those words, and then we have, and, I, and it, makes, it inspires me. It makes me want to sing and draw and paint and write and create because beauty inspires beauty. Grace inspires grace. Favor inspires favor. And so we had this beautiful psalm, and I think about the courts of God, and even the sparrow has a place near the altar of God. I just find that so beautiful. And so how lovely is your dwelling place? Loveliness is ken, right? Loveliness. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty? My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord, my heart, my flesh, cry out for the living God. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Blessed is the one who trusts in you. There's all sorts of beauty just dripping from that psalm for me because that's how i observe it right the scripture's filled with ken that's why we need to read it because beauty inspires beauty favor inspires favor when we see beauty and that beauty inspires us to make beauty that is hanan that's the action of grace that's graciousness that's the action of ken, of ken. 
Hanan, the act of showing Chen, can spread Chen. Boy, I feel like I'm going to splash you guys, but it, it, it went, just the easy way to say it is making beauty inspires beauty, and other people make beauty, and that inspires beauty. And can you see the, chain, the possibility of the chain reaction when the people of God do beautiful things, even in an ugly world? Can you see the, the potential there? Right? Beauty, inspiring beauty. Uh, in Greek, haris can, uh, uh, favor is the other type. Favor is the other type of chen. So you have beauty and favor. Well, favor is a very beautiful thing too. And in Greek, charis can mean something that invokes thanks. So somebody does something beautiful for you, shows you favor, and then you, you're, you're only, you, the only thing you can do is, oh, thank you. Thank you. That was grace. Grace just happened when you can say thank you like that for it. And if you want to see, I, I would encourage everybody to do this. One of the best books in the Bible that show, that's just all about grace and graciousness and beauty and favor is the book of Esther. If you've ever spent some time in the book of Esther, it's just amazing how much it just flows with grace and graciousness. Because Esther is actually split up by a bunch of parties, first of all. Where do you show favor to people? Hospitality? Chen is, we say, oh, you're a, a very gracious host. And so there's all of these parties in, in, in the book of Esther, and that's the trajectory of, of Esther's through all these parties. And then you have the the woman, Esther herself, who was born in an, a very, un, she was, a, it was a, we don't know if she was an uh, orphan when she was born, but at some point became a very ugly, unkind situation for her. She was an orphan, right? And so that's never fun, is it? Okay? So she is adopted by her relative Mordechai, which is an act of what? Of grace, of graciousness, of favor, of beauty. And then she grows up and the, the king is dissatisfied with Vashti, his wife, and so he puts her out and he's having, he wants a new queen. And so they have to have a beauty contest. And these poor women are subjected to an entire year of beauty and elegance classes and treatments so, that the, so the king can decide which, what his, who his new wife is going to be. And she is so overflowing with beauty and favor that Esther is, is chosen. And God, in his graciousness, uses all of this beauty, the favor, even the parties, to save the people of Israel from annihilation because Haman wants to destroy the Israelites. But Esther is put into a position of pen of favor, of grace. And she uses beauty and, and, and elegance to get favor from the king and save the people of Israel. And that beauty, inspiring beauty, was so important, important to the people of Israel that they still, they instituted a holiday in Scripture and said, We're, we have to celebrate this, this time every year. And if you've ever heard of uh, Purim, I always say Purim, but Purim, Purim is a celebration of what, what God did for Israel through Esther. Esther chapter 9, verse 20, uh, 28. These days should be remembered. The salvation of Israel should be remembered and observed in every generation by every family and in every province and in every city. You see how it spreads? Grace spreads, grace spreads, grace spreads, grace. In every city, and these days of Purim should never fail to be celebrated by the Jews, nor should the memory of these days die out among their descendants. Showing graciousness spreads grace, so people who experience graciousness want to spread grace. Grace inspires grace. Am I making my point yet? I've said it like 30 times. Beauty inspires beauty, favor inspires favor, grace inspires grace. Genuine acts of grace 
are when you show beauty or favor to something or someone that doesn't inspire beauty or favor to, to you, right? So, so uh, yeah, favor on its own. And, and so there's a proverb. I love this proverb. It's 1431. Whoever oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker, but whoever is kind, that word kind, whoever shows ken. That word of, for kindness is ken. Whoever is kind to the needy honors God. And so you think about this. You know, most of the time, the needy, the poor, that does inspire compassion. If you ever walked through a homeless camp, I hope, you know, even for somebody like me, I get it. I, my gut goes, you've got to do something about this. But that, that, homeless, the, the, that situation rarely inspires beauty. You see what I'm saying? Nobody goes th walking through and goes, oh, this is beautiful. I wish I lived here. You know, we don't do that. There's no hen in it. So hen has to come from somewhere so that grace and beauty can be given. And so the, the, there's only one person who is so full of grace that he could walk through that and go, there's enough beauty, enough grace, enough hen in me to make this beautiful. And that's Jesus, right? That is Jesus. And so we, we need to be aware that, that God is always gracious. For us, what is, what is the, what, typically, what does the world do with poverty? Bury it? Hide it? Um, make believe that it's not there? Oh, oppress it? We, it's very easy to take advantage of the poor. But what does God do? God moves through it and says, I see beauty. I make beauty. Beauty makes beauty. I can change this. And the people of God can have God move through, a, through us to do that too. So the word that God uses for himself for gracious Hanun is only used for God. God has a word that is specifically and only for him, for his graciousness. That word in Hebrew is Hanun, and this is why. Hanun. If someone was consistently and constantly superior to everyone and everything, Right? In other words, who's the biggest and most powerful? God, right? He's consistently superior and stronger than everyone, but his character is full of ken, of grace. And he's always giving grace. He never stops. He can't stop giving grace because he's full of grace. That's who he is. I am the gracious God then that's Hanun. If you're, if you're the best, the biggest, the strongest, and you're always showing grace, then you're Hanun. That's why, there's, that's why that word is only for God. Does that make sense? He gets his own because he, his grace is unstoppable. His grace is unstoppable, never-ending. And because, because of, of God's grace, we, we can be full. We're full of God when he lives in us, right? That's the character of God. He's full of grace. And if, and if we're full of God, we have the propensity for graciousness. And I, and I said, I said it at eight, I'll say it now. I, if, if there is one thing that this church, I mean, if, if I had to pinpoint the, the most obvious God quality, Jesus quality, of this congregation, it is graciousness. Graciousness. It just seems like the graciousness 
doesn't stop. There's so many people here who care about hospitality and about taking care of others and about showing beauty and about showing favor. And can we always get better? All right, but I look at it this way, right? If you're a a skilled basketball player, what's your dream? The NBA, right? You're not going to just stop at college ball. You want to go all the way, right? We, We have the natural talent for graciousness, but we have the potential to be all-stars. You see what I'm saying? And I, I truly believe that about this church because God's grace just flows here, flows through, these, through you, and that's why I love being here. John 1, 14. I love this, right? The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father. What is the glory of Jesus Christ? The glory of Jesus Christ is that God looked at us in sin and loved us anyway, right? He looked at us and said, there, he, he didn't say, they're sinners, I'm going to destroy them and throw them away. He said, I want them. I love them. I want them. I want them to be my children. I'm going to make a way for them to be in the closest relationship with me forever. And Jesus, his glory is the cross. The glory of Christ is the cross. Because that was the way that God showed ultimate kanun, graciousness to us. Right? And so... We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. And in a, a meth. In a couple of weeks, we're going to talk about truth, a meth. Out of his fullness, out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. See, the law was grace. Because the law was a, a, an opportunity for people to stay in relationship with God. But it required sacrifice, and we, we weren't very good at it, were we? But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son. I love this. Who is himself God? God. John doesn't mess around at all. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and all things came into being through Him, and without Him not a thing was made that was made, and it goes on and on and on, and we're like, well, who is this guy? Well, Jesus is God. How about if I just lay it out for you? And John just gets it out there. Who is himself God, and is in the closest relationship with the Father, and has made him known. That is pen. That is beauty inspiring beauty. That is favor inspiring favor. That is fullness of grace. That is joy for us, right? That's that's what it is. Because of God's graciousness, because of Jesus' graciousness, God's graciousness comes to life, fulfills his grace on the cross for us so that not only Jesus could have the closest relationship with the Father, but because of Jesus, who else gets to have the closest relationship with the Father? That's hospitality, isn't it? That is literally God saying, I love you so much, I'm going to make you a prince and a princess in my kingdom. That's hospitality. That is graciousness. Kanun. Only God could do that. Because of the graciousness God showed us through Jesus, we can be close to him. And this is the great thing. Him living in us, even though we are weak, he's the strongest. So, we have the authority to do the action of grace, Kanun, in ways that reveal God's graciousness, Hanun, 
And God in us inspires grace in us, and that inspires in turn grace in others, and it can have this amazing impact on the world. And I got to tell you, there, this, is, this is a wrap going right near the end here. I know I'm really pushing it. This is one of my favorite examples of what happens when Hanun, when God's graciousness inspires grace, which inspires grace, which inspires grace. And I, 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 I've loved this since I was a little kid, and I always thought, if I could go to Fantasy Island for the weekend, this would be the weekend that I would love to experience. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm kind of a realist, believe it or not, and I, I'm a little bit skeptical, but I have this dream that this could happen in the church again, even for a limited time, because it didn't last for, for very long, but it happened. And I would love to see this happen again. I mean, this would, this would blow my top if this would happen again someday in my lifetime. So in Acts 4, you got Peter and John, and they've healed a guy, and they've been preaching Jesus, and they've been, they got arrested, they got beaten, they were threatened. Don't preach Jesus anymore or you will be killed. And what did they do? They went... They were celebrating. Only grace can do that. That is an ugly thing. But God's graciousness turned it into a thing of beauty. And they go back to their, uh, their brothers and sisters in Christ. And they're singing and celebrating. And they pray. They pray this prayer. And this prayer is the beginning of something that happens in Jerusalem that... I, like I said, if, if I could live this for a weekend, I, well, I'd never want to leave, but... So listen to this. So, Acts 4.29, and this is the prayer that starts this. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word. What's God's word all about? Grace. Right? Speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. What is that? Ken. It's favor. This is all about beauty and favor. It's grace. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them, for from time to time those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. And so what you see is the impact that the beauty of God has when beauty inspires beauty, when grace inspires grace, when favor inspires favor, when God is never stopping, when the Holy Spirit is moving, when the people of God are of what? One heart and one mind. Filled full of God by the power of the Holy Spirit, and they can't stop being gracious. Man. Anybody else want to go to that weekend? I would love that. If God is here, and he's in us, and he is Hanun, in a state of always and ever constantly being gracious, then how can we be gracious as a body? Like God is gracious. And we, you do it. We do it. This church is awesome. Should have, if you weren't here yesterday, man, you missed a lot of graciousness. It was so cool. What is the generosity and forgiveness and compassion and mercy and love and kindness? What's the beauty? What's the hen that we, by the power of God, can begin to reveal among us and out of us into the world so that, that it, grace inspires grace? What, what is that for us? Now, now, I want to invite you a couple of things. Next Saturday, 
at one o'clock. We're going to go over to Sandy Elementary like we went up to Alta. And again, you know, this, none of this is real unless something happens, right? So all that stuff that I talked about last week, something's going to happen. Sandy Elementary, too, we're going to go and pray for these kids, pray for the campus and, and uh, at one o'clock. But you need to know already, we have this kind of relationship with Sandy Elementary. We do backpacks and stuff for them. We, and, and this year, the week of Thanksgiving, we're going to be doing food boxes at, because we've, we, they've told us, well, we have the, this many families who really need help. And so we're doing, at least now, I've, it's 75 and there may be more food boxes for, fam for families from Sandy Elementary. And we're, we're figuring out all the details, but we can, this is a, this is a, is this a way that we can show grace? Grace, in, and grace inspires grace. Grace inspires, graciousness inspires graciousness. It's the key. How can we inspire beauty and favor that catches hold among us in the world so that the world, so that the, this is what happens, right? The world says, wow, that's beautiful. I like that. I want to be part of that. I, I want that. I want to do that. How can we do that, right? That's what we need to be praying about. So right now, I want to ask you to pray with me and ask God to show us full of his unstoppable grace how can we do this what's the, what can we do next lord heavenly father huh, enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness your word of grace your actions of grace stretch out your hand through us lord god to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Lord, show this church, Good Shepherd, where, how, when we can show your graciousness to the world around us and among us and through us and in us. It can start here because it will multiply. Give us specific vision, God. And inspire us. Give us the energy and the resources to, to do your gracious will and your gracious work, your gracious way. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.